The genre of horror is a great expanse. Great expanse. We want to explore it. We've spent years building our credibility, our reputation, interviewing people from all levels of horror, discussing visual and literary horror. This is our exploration. This is Full Spectrum Horror. Wow, that's who awesome. Yes, who? That's, that's an intro. Yes, it is. Do you mean the dress code? I left my cape at home. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Full Spectrum Horror. I am your host, Mr. Christopher Highland, and with me, as always, is you know him and love him, Mr. Eric Morse. Say hello, Eric. Oh, hello, everybody. This is Clive Barker. <laughs> no, it's not Clive Barker. It's me, King Splatter Punk, William Passon, right here, with, of course, the horror sex symbol, Mr. Christopher Highland, for all you ladies out there. <laughs> Yes, and uh, let's see, we are going to be discussing uh, oh, something. <laughs> yeah, not until the second half of the of the show. Let me have some joy before before bringing on the pain. Yeah, quite a surprise. I didn't know it was going to be like uh, like this before I I watched the movie. Okay, well we can't uh, spoil it for the. For so the it's one of the, it's one of those cases where we watched it, so you don't have to if you don't want to. Yeah, very much so. You know, like uh, 120 days of Sodom, Mister Highland. <laughs> oh, you didn't you didn't uh, and notice the dark comedy. Uh, no. Anyway. I did, I did and, and uh, especially in the novel. Lovely. Lovely. But you're, you're special. Alrighty, people. Uh, one thing we've got to do before we, we continue is we've got to acknowledge that this edition of Full Spectrum Horror is brought to you by WCP Enterprises. And the Witch and the Prince, Mr. Highland's uh, book. Check it out on Amazon.com, uh, in Kindle, and in print. Also, just out is Symphony of Death Part 4, Shadow Man vs. the Undead, my book. Also on Amazon.com in Kindle and print. So definitely check those out. And okay, Mr. Highland, you know, I mean, you know, you've been, you've been going after me the entire month and, you know, about fan mail. (laughs) Yeah, because I've been bored and I've been curious. Uh, yeah, well, I've been I've been like uh, Smithers in that one uh, in that one yeah. uh, scene in that one Simpsons episode where, where, yeah, goes, where, 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 where he goes. I want to want to want to me me me. I want to want to want to. Yeah, well, you know, thing is, people, you need to send <laughs> us fan mail because if you don't send fan mail, he gets he gets violent. Mr. Highland gets violent and he gets temperamental about it. You know, I told him, you know, yesterday that we didn't have any fan mail and oh my god. 
Oh, yeah, do it what, for what, me, what, people! Do it for me! What, what, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, drop a tab of uh, alcohol seltzer in my mouth while I'm sleeping, and and I wake up and you say, Oh, there's no mail today. And yeah, I know. And I'm foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're foaming at the mouth. Well, no, you always foam at the mouth when 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 we when we're when we don't have any fan mail, you know, <laughs> by half, halfway to the show. Uh, uh, where's the fan mail? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But luckily, I checked the spam filter today. And you, have, you have a spam filter? Three... Where did you get yeah, that? It's, yeah, it's where all of Eric Hyde and, uh, and JTV's shit goes. It's called the spam filter. It's where everyone who gets blocked by oh, me. Oh, you're sounding like you're underwater. Again. Look at them. So I lucked out. I found. I found. Hello. The... Hello. Oh shit. Uh, Still there. Uh, Yes, I'm still here. Oh, good, good. I had some interference. You had some interference? Yes. Oh, my God. Because you, you wouldn't be able to hear the fan mail. Okay, then, well, you're coming, you're coming angry in. angry at me again. All right, you're coming in just fine. Just continue. Uh, all righty, master. Yes, I'll do it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, alrighty, so here we go with our fan mail. Uh, first one is from Ron from Burkittsville. You know where the Blair Witch is from? No. No? You don't know the Blair Witch? I no. know it's not real, but it, you know, you know, Blair Witch isn't real, but Burkittsville's there. Just wasn't called Blair in the past. Well, anyways, all righty, here we go. Christopher and William and that girl with the sexy voice I hear on your show. Last month's show was really good with the animated prop guy. I only had to drink half a bottle of bourbon to get through it. It usually takes the entire bottle. Keep up the good work. When are you guys going to talk about any sexy vampire girl films? I love those films, especially the ones starring blonde women with big knockers. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's nice, you know. Um... Oh, you mean like... Uh, By knockers, do you mean those big wooden things that they knock together? No. <laughs> I mean, he means... Uh, well, we know what he means. I know what he means. I'm just joking. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about those uh, vampire movies like uh, oh, uh, Ingrid Pitt starred in. Remember those? Oh, of course. I know. Yeah. I know. The, those uh, type of movies. The Karnstein films. Uh-huh. Yeah, the Hammer Karnstein films. I love the Hammer Karnstein film, especially to love a vampire. That was a that was a really good one because it's a it's a very good adaptation of Carmilla. But yeah, you know, we, we, I'd love to to talk about uh, the Karnstein films or any uh, any blonde, uh, uh, big busted. Uh, Vampire women love the big busted vampire women myself. You know, you know I like any vampire women because you know vampire women's women's are cool. You know, I even like Vamp, and I don't find uh, what's her name very attractive. One that oh. starts on that one. Oh, what? Grace like, Jones. Yeah, Grace Jones. <laughs> But she made a good vampire. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So, you know, there is one uh, one vampire film I'd really love to 
to find a copy of and for us to talk about. It's called Innocent Blood. Oh, yeah. They, they've, uh, on occasion, they've been showing that on cable lately. Oh! And I, because, I, I mean, it disappeared it. for a while. I, I, I saw it in the theaters years ago. Oh. And never... You know, could never find a copy of it. I, I was driving me nuts. I know what the poster looks like and everything, but mm. I can't find it. And I love it—the good, you know, the va- vampires and and gangster thing. Yeah, it's one of the better '90s uh, horror films. Yeah, it was, and it and it's gotten very little uh, appreciation. So anyways, Ron, you got it, buddy. We'll we'll get you we'll get you some vampire ladies. Alrighty, this one is from Oh wait, 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 you're the interference again. Uh oh, you're interfered. Oh shit. You still there? Oh shit. I'm still here. I can barely hear you. Hello! Hello. Oh, now it's better. Okay, boy, you're you're having hearing problems today. I don't know what it is. Mr. Harlan's getting old, people. No, it's the it's the phone. <laughs> I'm joking. Alrighty, so next one is from Wilma Hunt from uh, Santa Rosa. Hello to the incredibly intelligent host. Christopher Highland. She misspelled your name, believe it or okay. not. It's all right. Yeah, she she spelled Christopher uh C H R I S T O F E R. So anyways, uh hello to the incredible intelligent host Christopher Highland and the always amusing and entertaining Oh, fuck no. What? Jim Patterson. She messed up my name. Fuck it. Get my name right. It's Patterson. P-A-T-T-I-S-O-N. It's an honest mistake. Anybody could make it. Yeah, I know. I get it all the time at the doctor's office. They drive me nuts. Anyways, um... It is always a thrill for me when you post your shows. I know I will enjoy them. I love your interesting guests and movie talk. Keep doing what you do. Okay, William, or Wilma. (laughs) Wilma. Thank you. Like what you do, do except uh, get a thesaurus and learn. You know, look, actually look at how we spell our names, please. Next, uh, next not time. Every, not everyone is a good speller. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know that. Uh, I'm school I with a lot that, of them in my. I, well, there are pe- people who have dyslexia. Who aren't good spellers. Oh, okay. Yeah. And just like with me, I'm not good at math, and yet. <laughs> oh, I'm horrid at math. And, and schools just expected me to be good at it. Oh, I know. I know, and I I couldn't get past pre-algebra. That's why I don't have a BA in uh, filmmaking. Is because I they expected me to do trigonometry and it was like fuck no. <laughs> uh, God, fucking hate these people when they do that. Alrighty, so here's our last one from Joe Cartwright from Lake Tahoe. Hello, Wolfpack friends. I love your show. I always love to sit back and listen to the two of you engage in the fun that you create. I would love to see you at a personal appearance. Will you be doing any? 
Uh, no. <laughs> no, not, not right now for me. Um, due to health problems and stuff. And of course, you know, dealing with the COVID thing, we can't do any personal appearances. So, you know, that's kind of, kind of a mute thing for a while. Plus also, Mr. Highland is shy. He doesn't want anyone to see his face. Yeah, you know, because, because he's like, because he's like Eric from uh, from uh, the uh, Phantom of the Opera. He doesn't want anyone to see the, see his face. And oh, I, well, what I if said, I what if I come in uh, dressed as the Phantom of the Opera? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, did. I told him, why don't you wear a mask? But no, I won't. I don't want to do it. I'm scared. I'm scared of the people. <laughs> why, why don't I just dress up as a fan of the opera? Yeah, why don't you dress up as fan of the opera? You know, or, or actually, Mask of the Red Death is better. Yes. You know, with the hat and the skull mask and all that. Ooh, and the staff. That's awesome. Oh, shit. We're getting that interference again. Uh oh, Mr. Highlands. Uh, Hearing aid is going out again. Not mine. Mr. Harlan, can you hear me? Yeah. You I'm can't... sorry. You were you were saying what were you saying before we got the interference? Nothing. I was just saying Mr. Highland's uh hearing aid went out. I have any hearing aid. <laughs> But yes, I would absolutely love to dress as. Uh, All right, hey, so what now, were you saying? Mask of the Red Death? Yeah, Mask of the Red Death. Well, dress that. Oh well, yeah, I mean, I if you were to if you were to be invited to, for an appearance, and I were to be invited for an appearance, I mean, <laughs> love to do that. Yeah, same with me. I'd love, I'd love, but they, but they don't invite us because they're assholes. So whatever. And right now, you know, I don't think I don't think Mr. Highland wants to to drag me to uh, the ER. Like yeah. what happened at the last convention, I ended up in the emergency room on the second day of the convention. <laughs> oh fuck, that was horrible. Well, dress as dress as a character who is in a wheelchair. How about that? And I can and I can uh, dress as uh, the no the Phantom of the Opera that with the skull mask. Oh yeah, with, with that red costume. How about that? Actually, I think I think Mr. Highland, you're more uh, uh, God. What what is it? Phantom of the Paradise. That would be you. With the helmet and the teeth. Huh? And the cape. Yeah. There you go. Phantom of the Paradise for Mr. Highland. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he'd probably even put in the sound thing for his voice. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So now it is time... For the thing that Mr. Highland does. He spends the entire month, the entire month, going through the internet looking for that weird, that strange, that horror news just for you people to go for it. Okay. I don't have much, so I will go through it as quick as I can. And uh, unfortunately, given current events, it's uh, taken a bite out of the news. So, here we go. Brian Lumley's microscope book, Blood Brothers, which is the sixth book in the microscope series, is now out on Audible. So, look for that. Nice. And also currently out by F. Paul Wilson, The Touch. And also currently out 
by Brian Lumley, part of the Necroscope series, Lost Years, Volume 2, also out on Audible. And for any fans of Junji Ito, hope I'm not, I hope I'm not mispronouncing that, his Tome series. Gesundheit. What? I said Gesundheit. <laughs> <sighs> his Tome series. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that either. They are making a TV series out of the manga. Oh, now, cool. for anyone who's read this, the artwork is quite reminiscent of um, H.R. Giger. Now, have you have you read uh, his work or, or seen his art? No, not at all. Oh, <laughs> there is one image that you have to see, and I've I've posted this before, and it is wondrous. It is basically a, well, it's kind of a pyramid of heads. Lovely. Sounds like my, uh, and kind it's a, 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 a uh, pyramid head snake. Whoa. Um, anyone who likes you know, horror the way it should be should check this out. Unfortunately, I don't have a release date when this is going to premiere, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll hear about it more soon. So keep your heads up for that. And last, although certainly not the least, and, uh, oh, this just came out today, <laughs> July 14th, uh, Lucio Fulci documentary biopic, Fulci for Fake, it's Blu-ray, mm. and it has a ton of special features, uh, including interviews, uh, home movies, outtakes, Oh, interview outtakes. Uh, oh. Oh, as I said, tons of interviews. So look for that. Okay. That's all I have. How about you? Alrighty. Now we are doing a memorabilia and good stuff by uh-huh. Mr. King of Splatterpunk. Alrighty, so let's get into the toys and goodies. NECA has revealed its alien big chap glow-in-the-dark ultimate action figure. Originally planned as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive It will be available on July 23rd in Walmart stores for $29.96 and in NECA's online store for $34.99. The Xenomorph stands over 9 inches tall and has over 30 points of articulation, including a bendable tail and a hinged jaw that opens to reveal an extending inner mouth. It comes with a face hunger, chest burster, and egg base. All pieces feature fluorescent green paint that glows in the dark. They are packaged in a glowing window box with opening flap. NECA has also unveiled its Predator 2 City Demon Predator, 
ultimate action figure originally planned as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. It was available on July 23rd in Walmarts for $29.96 and NECA store $39.99. Standing eight inches tall, the toy is cast in clear plastic with lightning accents. It has over 30 points of articulation plus Retracting wrist blades, articulated shoulder cannon, uh, five interchangeable hands, disc combi stick, and skulls are included. It's packaged in a window box with lightning effect when opened. The ball is back on Freud Rags. Phantasm 2 collection with two shirts designed by Kyle Clawford for $28 and a pair of socks designed by Scott Schmier for $12. Yeah, those things look pretty damn cool. Factory Entertainment has released a Jaws plush toy, Bruce the Shark measuring 12 inches long and comes with three attachable barrels originally planned as a san diego comic-con exclusive yet again the piece is limited to 1000 it costs 25 dollars and will ship the week of august 24th neca via taka toys has revealed its Gremlins Summer Games Gremlin Ultimate Action Figure, originally planned, of course, for San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. It will be available on July 23rd in Walmart stores for $29.96 and in NECA online shop for $34.99, based on a 1984 Olympic-themed ad campaign for the film, the toy stands approximately six inches tall. It wears a fabric swimsuit and comes with a snorkel, mask, flippers, and torch. It's packaged in a window box with an opening flap. All righty, Scooby-Doo and the rest of the Mystery Inc. gang are joining the Living Dead Dolls line scheduled to ship in late 2020, early 2021. The complete set is available for pre-order for $200 via Mesco Toys. Fred, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, each stand approximately 10 inches tall and feature five points of articulation. They are packaged in individual window boxes with a part of Scooby-Doo, which can be assembled to form an eight-inch tall doll with six points of articulation. Oh, boy, I know Mr. Highland's going to go for that. Or which one of those, which one of those uh, things are, are you going for? I, I, I gather you're going to go... For the plush uh, jaws, right? Uh, I don't know. You're sounding like you're underwater again. Uh oh, Mr. Highland's uh, hearing aids going down again. No, no. Oh, <clears throat> oh, do you mind if I uh, do a slight amendment on my last news item? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I forgot to mention that it, this will be a live-action adaptation directed by Alexandre Aha. Oh, nice. Now, let me see. Okay, so if not if not Jaws, the plush Jaws, because I thought you loved sharks. Uh, mm. How about the Olympic-themed uh, gremlin? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, okay. 
All right. Well, you know, the thing is, I find the uh, glow in the dark aliens and the uh, predator doll, I find those rather, you know, it's showing that NECA is running out of ideas for for those lines. When they when they start doing glow in the dark and you know blue with lightning bolts, that that's that's pretty bad. Alrighty, so anyway, so that's horror news. I do have one little scream factory item. I didn't know I was going to be able to to put this out because they didn't have this on its list. Which totally amazes me. Because this is awesome. But Scream Factory is putting out a collector's edition. All the Friday the 13th films. All of them. All the Paramount. All the new lines in one collection. A big old huge square box. Like the like the stuff that uh, Dave Sterling's been doing with uh, with uh, Camp Blood and uh, his his other uh, f- slasher franchise. I can't remember its name. You remember its name, Mister Highland? Because yeah, I know you j- absolutely love David Sterling's stuff. <laughs> Huh? Uh, ah, old man? I don't you... think I know who you mean. You know Camp Blood. I it's... vaguely heard of it. You know, David Sterling, his other one of his other franchises is Witchcraft. No. Been a mega thing. I mean shit, it's already what is it? 17 show 17 movies no don't know him <clears throat> oh okay well anyways yeah he he comes out with these huge box sets that are like big squares and that's that's like it is is with the uh, Friday the 13th one i don't know how much they're charging for that one but i can imagine it's a huge ass price but you get everything you get uh booklets you get posters you get everything with that and the cover art for the box is just outstanding you know years ago the thing was that i fought for there to be a DVD copy, you know, a DVD collection of all the Friday the Thirteenth, and it never really happened. They they got collections of the uh, Paramount ones, and and you know they got a small collect small edition of the um, New Line films, but they never got them together like this. So I'm really thrilled about that, and I'm happy for the Friday the 13th fans. Aren't you thrilled, Mr. Highland? Uh, He's going, what, Sonny? What? 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 God, you sound like my grandpa. Well, actually, he's dead, so you, so you don't sound like a grandpa because my gr- grandpas don't talk anymore. <laughs> About the Friday the 13th uh, collection. Can you hear me? Friday? Yeah, I can hear you. You started to sound like you were underwater again. Ah! I don't, I don't know what the I'm I don't know what Underwater, Mr. Happened. Island? I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, anyways, uh, so now it is time for movie reviews. (laughs) 
Go ahead, Grandpa. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Oh, you definitely, definitely believe that you're pregnant. <laughs> Jeez, should I do the review in that voice? Anyway, um, I only have one film to review, and I, I expected more from it, but uh, I, that's me. And I hope you've heard of this one too, but if not... No matter what I say about it, watch it anyway and judge for yourself. Okay, this is called The Revenant, and I believe it's from 2009. And let's see. Oh, no, 2012. Never mind. And... For those of you who don't know what a revenant is, it is not exactly a zombie. It's just someone who is completely conscious of their actions, who comes back from the dead for whatever reason. And this is about a soldier in the Middle East who gets killed after an ambush. They're buried, and <clears throat> some odd reason the, they don't put the dirt over over him. So he easily gets out of his coffin, and I thought, what's up with that? They don't put the dirt on him. So he's walking around, and he finds his... Um, his friend. And he's trying to figure out what what's going on, why he why he came back, and and he tries to his friend tries to feed him food, and it doesn't work. He throws up a black bile. So they figure out that he needs blood to keep from decomposing. So he goes to a blood bank and ends up getting that. And it's not enough. So he figures out a way to get more by becoming a vigilante. And so him and his friend end up becoming vigilantes until one um, until his friend ends up getting shot and he has to turn his friend into another revenant and then they continue on with their um Vigilantism. And then uh, in the midst of all this, uh, the Revenant is uh, reunited with his um, girlfriend. And then they have another friend who, who figures out what's going on and what he is what he is and what they've been doing and she confronts them after they take down a bunch of uh, dirty cops. And let's see what happens after that. Um, oh yeah, not long after that the um, the friend gets um ambushed by one of the people they took out 
who who be, ended up becoming a revenant themselves. And the friend gets uh, dismembered and their head gets mailed to the, the revenant soldier. And he's forced to crush his head with a um, I want to say steamroller. Bulldozer, that's it. Those are the treads. And so after that, he gets, uh, he tries to kill himself by shooting himself in the head. That doesn't work. And he gets um, ambushed by the cops manages to escape and in the midst of all that he he loses steam by getting caught in the morning because he can only move around at night for some odd reason. I don't know why. It's never explained. And so he collapses on top of a on top of a hill. And scientists uh, find him and take him in. The movie promised a uh, you know, a comedy. I only laughed once, and it was a cheap laugh when the severed head of the friend gets mailed to them, and he has to take. <laughs> oh God! He has to take a a dildo and put it to his to the head's throat in order to understand, in order to hear what the head's saying. I thought that was rather a cheap laugh. So, if you're expecting, you know, a good comedy, you're not going to find it. But, you know, just like horror comedy is subjective, so. As for a review, I would give this a two and a half out of five. Oh. I mean, right. I mean, I recently wrote a short short story about a revenant, and that's much better than this. I mean, that's this is a that's actually what I wrote is actually much funnier than than this film. Yeah, I, I I gather probably would be. <laughs> yeah, because that one sounded like it was uh it was a uh stinker. Yeah. Uh, well, I have uh two films. One that one that I watched years ago, but I just got a uh, uh, a you know redone version of it, and I rewatched it, and uh, you know wanted to review it. Anyways, um, first one I'm reviewing is John Carpenter's uh, Ghosts of Mars, and. Natasha Hemstridge, uh, she plays a cop on Mars. And the thing is, she's going to pick up a uh, a criminal, her and uh, uh, who's, who's uh, Jason Statham. Uh, they're going to to uh, oh and uh, Pam Greer. Uh, she's the she's the boss. She's the 
the uh, person in charge of their unit. And the person that they're going after, believe it or not, is Ice Cube. His character's name is Desolation Williams. Because he's a badass, you know, kind of like uh, in in the image of Snake Blitzkin. So anyways, uh, the cops go to pick him up. And they, you know, he's at this mining colony. And they have to take this train there and stuff. And the train leaves them there. And they find that the uh, colony is empty. And they go looking around for people. You know, something's, something's wrong here. And they keep finding these weird... Uh, Sculptures made of, um, like, uh, scissors and stuff. And eventually they find bodies. Bodies hanging from the ceilings with their heads cut off. And anyways, what they find is that uh, a Half of the miners have been possessed by Martians, ancient Martians, and these Martians uh, are killing off the uh, the miners. They're they're killing them off. Anyone who is not possessed is the enemy, and they chop off their heads and they put their heads on pikes. And stuff. And so the big thing on this is that Natasha Hemstridge and Jason Statham, uh, you know, after Pam Greer is killed, uh, they have to uh, get out of there. You know, get get away from this place because these these ones are nuts. You know, they they have weapons and stuff that they've created. They've, uh, you know, changed, changed themselves. They've uh, done body modifications, you know, scarification and everything on themselves. You know, it's really freaky. And so the thing is, what ends up happening is that Desolation Williams... Uh, you know, Ice Ice Cube, he, he gets free, and he ends up helping them, and they decide that they have to destroy the mining uh, colony and get back to the um, capital because, you know, they're worried that this, that this stuff is going to spread all over Mars. You know, you know, the thing is that every time one of these possessed people die, uh, the spirit moves on to another body. So, you know, it's it's something. And so they want to destroy all the bodies at once. So they end up, they put the uh, atomic uh, power station on overload and try to get out of there. But anyways, um, you know, people, people, when um, this film came out, it's like a lot of John Carpenter's films. You know, it they got a lot. It got a lot of shit. You know, it's not the greatest John Carpenter film. It's it is really, in fact, the weakest. That I've ever seen, a, well, next to what happened, you know, with the film that comes after it. Yeah. But that was, you know, this was after years of John Carpenter walking away from Hollywood, walking away from horror when when he did the, the ward. And that film was, it didn't even look like a John Carpenter film at all. No. This was kind of like the last true John Carpenter film, Ghosts of Mars, 
you know, where he did the where he did the music and that, and it had that John Carpenter feel about it. And you know, John Carpenter, the thing is, after he finished this film, he just said to hell with it. He he was so tired. You know, he was burned out on Hollywood. He was burned out on the critics. He was burned out on these ones. And he just said, to hell with it. I'm done. And he walked away for all those years. And he lost it. <laughs> I I think all he, you know, I think he's only done the board since. And he's just basically stopped making films altogether. But, uh this one, um, Ghosts of Mars, you know, most, if usually if it's a John Carpenter film, I'll give it at, at the, at least a four. Yeah, you know? I mean, I remember seeing it. It's not a bad film. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, this isn't really a bad film. This is an entertaining film. I really liked, you know, it. But it's not the best John Carpenter, so I'm probably going to give it a three and a half. Did you know that it was meant to be another um, Snake Plissken movie? Yeah, I know. I know because he wrote the script right after uh, Escape from L.A. or Escape from New York. And the thing was that uh, the one said no. They absolutely hated it. So it took years before he did another Snake Blitzkin. I think I think he did uh, Escape from L.A. just before he did this one. Mm-hmm. I recall. Yeah. And he, you know, it was a totally different script from what he originally planned for Escape from L.A. I loved it. I loved it. Um, so I don't know. You know, I mean, even for the most part, except for, you know, I, I have to say no to the to the ward. The ward is complete and utter crap. No. But even during his heyday, uh, the worst uh, John Carpenter film was far better than a lot of other people's uh, failures. Yeah. Yeah, so... Hooray for John Carpenter. All righty, so my next film, you're going to appreciate this, Mr. Oh. Hart. Oh, you're going to love this. This is, this, is, this is fantastic. The next film that I am going to talk about is What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, God. No. Oh God, no. I love this film. I absolutely love this film. Uh I think the television series is a hundred percent better though. Oh love this film. I mean, you know, the idea of a mockumentary about the lives of vampires and what they do in their free time in between uh feeding is interesting. I mean, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're uh, in New Zealand and, you know, the, this batch is in New Zealand and, and you know, they have to deal with, uh, you know, you know, who's going to be in the clean, you know, on the cleaning uh, chore wheel and stuff and how do they get into the nightclubs because they have to be, you uh, uh, welcomed in and stuff. If they don't, they they're stuck sitting outside and stuff, and you know, dealing with okay, you know, should I should we make new vampires and stuff? And you know, you have the fact that all these vampires are completely out of date, especially in their dress uh, style. And the one, the one vampire, he can't even go out and in into, uh, you know, and have fun because he's he's a Nosferatu, and he's stuck in the basement and stuff. 
course, he dies uh, halfway through the film. But anyways, I loved uh, I loved Taki Watiti's uh, uh, vampire. I loved Vasile. He was he was fantastic in that. You know, these these are you know, it was it was an interesting uh comedic take. I love I love the werewolves <coughs> where they're sitting there scratching fleas off of themselves and stuff and trying to get into fights with the vampires. And that and I love the I love the scene where they um God, it was with the vampires. They went and they threw the ball in the that uh, with the werewolves. They threw the ball in the werewolves. They're chasing after the ball <laughs> so that they could get away from them. Yeah, it, you know, I loved it. It 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 had a good feel to it. It was it was tongue in cheek, and the vampires were cool. They had all the different types of vampires, you know, including a Vlad the Impaler type. And it was just it was just a fun movie. You know, as I said, I like the uh the television series better than the ones from Staten Island. They're I find them more fun though. They're they're the more fun group. These ones were okay though. So you know, I'll give um, uh, what we do in shadows. I'm going to give it a four because I loved it. I mean, I mean, obviously you don't, you were not uh, enthralled with it, Mister Highland. I gather. I haven't seen the film or the TV show, but I've seen commercials for the show, and I didn't laugh once. Yeah, well, well, you have to actually watch the show to to get on to it. That that might be the case, but I'm just saying, I can I mean, write. Some... I can write and create a much funnier TV show than that. Yeah, well, you have to try it out. I mean, hell, there's this one character that I in the television show that I that reminds me of you. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, I love, I love that. So, you know, I was, I was very happy with it. You know, that was my introduction to it. And I went on to the television series and I watched two seasons of that and was just loving it. Absolutely loving it. So anyways, alrighty, so now it is time for our music break. So I know Mr. Highland, you know, he, he chose the songs. He went, you know, he, he looked around all month for these to appreciate them. I mean, seriously, he worked hard. You know, I mean, it's terrible when a guy comes comes to another guy in tears and going going I can't find music for the oh my god I'm so <laughs> anyways right, so enjoy
Ever since first man has walked this earth, I have been here to whisper seeds of doubt and evil thoughts into his ear. I am the beast, the outcast angel fallen from on high. I go by many names, but there is one you can't deny. My name is Satan. Hi, everybody. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My friends all called me Old Scratch and I am a Capricorn. My turn-ons are romantic walks and killing the unborn. I've got little devil horns and a little goatee. Little devil eyes to help a little devil see. And little cloven hooves make it kind of hard to ski. I'm Satan. Woohoo! Mephistopheles for some, I don't know. My real name is Beelzebub, but you can call me Beals. I love to watch Fox News and then go club some baby seals. Then I'll take a bubble bath and drink a Zinfandel, try to wash off that baby seal smell, and then I'll make a toast to me. Hey, here's to my hell. <laughs> my name is Satan. <laughs> to carry on my evil ways, I went and had a son, and now he makes his as a singing comedian I'm in every Zeppelin album I'm in all Rush Limbaugh's rants I'm the reason that the Boston Red Sox even had a chance And if I want to hear your soul I'll just throw it on the griddle Don't need to make a deal I don't need to tell a riddle And fuck Charlie Danners I don't care if you can fiddle I'm Satan Demo went down to Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. It's fucking bullshit, because I would not be caught dead in Georgia. Okay, it's like, oh my god! Six, six, six. Cheddar mac and cheese with bacon. Can you feel it? You like that, don't you? Oh, you taste so creamy. The little sounds your crispy bacon makes drive me crazy, you naughty little. Did you just spank your lunch? Yes. Nice. Food you want a fork. Introducing Devour. Wow. So this is what a real audition's like. Exciting. Sit down and take a bite of Devour. Mmm. So creamy. Oh. So spicy. Mmm. That cheese! Finished. Can I get some more? Devour food you want to fork. Hello, my she devils and demons. This is Nurse Hatchet, she wolf of the wolf pack. All righty, Mr. Island, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? <sighs> Okay, so now the pain begins. <laughs> oh, come on. This isn't by uh this isn't by choice. I'm not meeting to to inflict Yes, pain. I know. I know I know you said that you never saw it. He just thought, okay, let's do an anthology because we haven't done an anthology in a while. So 
you know, it's like, yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, and I knew that it was one of the last anthologies, but I didn't realize just, oh, oh my fucking God. Oh, the pain. Oh, come on. It's not the worst movie. And it's not the worst horror movie in the world or among the worst. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not, but it is, it is, it is the movie that killed the British anthology movement. Yeah. Literally the one that killed the British anthology movement. Uh, and what is such a horrible shame is that Vincent Price and... Uh, John Carradine. Yeah, John Carradine was stuck in this. And you could see... The pain on their faces. Oh, really? <laughs> their see- oh, yes, I could see it. Deep in those eyes, the just look of total, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, the wraparound. They go mm-hmm. to a monster club, and every, you know all the monsters are wearing cheap, uh, you know, I mean, it's like uh, party land monster masks. I know it's horrible. Yeah, I know it, it was. It was beyond low budget. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it was. It was right into uh, like really cheap Star Trek fan fiction where they where they put the Klingon mask on instead of doing makeup. Damn. Yeah, I mean that was that was nasty in the music. Yeah. The songs were just oh my god, it was like ah I know. Yeah, and and poor Vincent Price and you know John Carradine, I mean seriously. I mean you know, I mean it was the I think it was the third time that uh, Vincent Price had played a vampire. Oh, what were the other times? Oh, oh, he played a, a vampire on the um, in uh, Night Gallery. Oh, well, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, yeah, it's an episode called Blood Bank. And that, and he played it so much better in that one. He was he was really good in it. In that one, it was comedic, but it was, but, and I, I'm trying to remember where where the other one was because I thought he did two, he'd done two vampires in his career. No, maybe just maybe just these two. I think that. Probably is. Okay. But, uh... Oh, God. Poor, poor well, John what, Carradine. Well, what can we say about the stories in them? I mean, they, they try to... Well, at least the first one tries to be funny. I mean, I mean fun, not funny. Um, uh, it tries to be, scary. Tries to be scary. good. Scary. It tries to be scary. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and, I didn't like that one. I mean, that one they did at least try. It was it was fairly well written. Yeah, you know, and Mister Highland can relate to him. Yes, yes, he can. You know, you you live it. You live it in that manner, and you know, all by yourself with your with your sculptures and your books and. Not wanting people to come around because you don't, you know, you don't want them to see your face. <laughs> I'm joking. But, yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe we should bring back uh, mask culture after this, after 
um, what's going on it passes well I mean you know we we do we what, what do you mean mass culture um I don't know just you know like uh, <laughs> I mean masks. we're already in mass not those culture. not those kind of masks I mean other kind of masks oh those kind of masks okay you know, like uh, the, the kind of that Zora wears, or uh, oh, okay. You know, just stuff to hide people's identity. Oh, you mean oh, you mean party mask uh, ones? They do it. They do it. Cost kind, kind of. You know, I mean, you go to New Orleans and you go to like the Vampire Ball. They all they all wear those masks. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, I mean, I I love that that part the the party with with all of his family in there. That that was really good. Yeah, that story was really good. I mean, I I I liked it. It was it wasn't fantastic, but it was good. And the makeup uh, and. Makeup special effects they did for the the body when she comes back to her boyfriend. Oh my the god! The way that was looking. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they spent they spent a lot of their special effects uh, uh, budget on that. I could tell. Yeah, you know, that's that's why they had uh, the the ones at the club wearing wearing the stupid masks. But yeah, um, yeah, that one that one wasn't too bad. It was it really wasn't, and they got some good actors in it, and and that. But uh, the other ones, oh my god! Yeah, the other ones aren't scary at all. But I mean, especially the second one. I mean, I know the third one tries be scary but it's not no it's not scary and they tried to really go uh you know for a epic kind of thing with the set on the third story with with the town they did the yeah. town in in on the stage and are in the thing and it looked like it because yeah, obviously I mean, they couldn't find a real town that looked like that. Yeah, that was probably like a, I don't know. Yeah. Um, sort of village um, or field out in the middle of nowhere, and they had to build sets. Oh, that was all done on stage. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. the 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 village was all done on stage, and that's why it, that's why it really looked cheap when they had them running through the forest and that because it didn't match at all. And uh, God, but yeah, I can I could see that they spent most of their budget building that set. And then they just threw the the townspeople in that white makeup and shit. Yeah, and the claws and and fake teeth were incredibly well. You can tell they were fake just by looking at them. Yeah, yeah, that was that was real Z grade uh, claws in that. And, you know, I mean, even the second, you know, even the second story, I mean, you know. Yeah, that that was meant to be funny slash campy. Yeah. Yeah, the, the vampire son thing. Vampire with a family and he goes out and and kills people and, you know, gets money in for the house. By doing that. Yeah. 
And the only yeah. notable thing about that story is now Pleasance is in it. Yeah, and even he is wasted and he he's, you know, horrible. Horrible. <laughs> the act is acting in it. Oh my god. I'm sure you can make <laughs> I'm sure you can make a movie but you, uh, about all the outtakes and and uh, um behind the scenes stuff regarding what the actors really felt about being in the movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, was like, oh my exists. god, I got a contract for this piece of shit. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> god. And then and then when they're going, "Okay, Donald, here we got to put the the teeth in." Oh, well, we 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 didn't we couldn't afford the lower teeth. So here we're just putting the top teeth in there and you're going to sit there and go, "Ooh." Put it <clears throat> Like that, and you know, have have the ones chasing you and staking you. Oh my god! Uh. <laughs> that's what a that's what a horror comedy needs to be—just a bunch of outtakes for a fake movie. Yeah, that would be cool. I want to see that. <laughs> oh my god! Should actually do that. That that yes. would, that would be a horrible thing, you know. Actually, just do the production of a really bad horror movie, and exactly. and and just all the conflicts and stuff. Exactly, kind of like. I a... mean, I mean, that's that's. I actually had an idea for uh, something similar like that. Yeah, you know, like a horror comedy version of Soap Dish, in a way. Uh, my mine the thing was that it was these guys who wanted to sell their zombie film. Their film was All American Zombie. And the thing is that they go to the studio and the studio says, Well, yeah, we'll buy this script and you guys can make the film, but you know what? We we're trying to cut the budget down so you have to go to India to make it. <laughs> Oh, not Canada? <laughs> no, India. They have to go to India, and then they have to make the Indian people there look like different uh, nationalities, you know, Chinese, black people, and stuff. And the thing is, ones in India, they, want, they make them have to throw in the dance routine. Where so all of a sudden in the middle of this zombie thing, the the ones have to dance because that's a requirement of doing a film in India. If you didn't know that, so just imagine this film where where these ones they have to make an Indian guy look like a Chinese guy. Oh, I trust. I trust makeup and prosthetics would be utilized. Yeah, but low budget. Oh, and and make them look like white people too, because it takes place in New York and trying to make uh, New Delhi look like New York. Oh, well, I trust there would be matte paintings used. Yeah, matte paintings and stuff, but I mean, it's like. Oh my god, you know, it's like how the hell did we get, you know, and they're just sitting there, how the hell did we get into this? Oh my god. And so the thing is that it ends with uh, them actually doing the film and getting it done and it turns into an absolute hit. <laughs> American Zombie. <laughs> Is a hit. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! I, I, you know. Anyway, so that that was my idea for for a uh, horror comedy like that. But you you could you could imagine it, Mister Highland, right? 
Yes. Yeah. It'd be funny as shit. Yeah, just like my idea for the outtake film. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, poor, you know, the Monster Club, I mean, oh my God. Uh, yeah, this, this, this film ended British anthology films. I, you never see a British anthology film anymore. Yeah, we just say it because I can imagine, you know, true horror anthologies made in Britain after this. I mean, it's, you know, given how the eighties were and it's sad. Yeah, I mean the only thing that came out of Britain that was an anthology was uh Hammer's House of Horror. Oh. That was it. Uh television show, Hammer's House of Horror. And that had all the Hammer anthology, you know, favorite actors and stuff. And that, but it was a television show. And, you know, as I said, then they also did Thriller during that time. But, uh, yeah, they decided, well, you know, the problem was that the last two anthology films that came out of Britain tanked, of course, you know, this one. And there was uh, one by Amigas that I don't I don't know what the title was but I do remember the stories and and it was the one there was the one where they had the the town of vampires and the thing is that the guy goes into the uh uh restaurant and they you know they're trying to serve him uh blood clots you know, that was how bad it was. You know, and they... I don't know what happened. Why why, what, why they ran out of uh, stories. You know? Because, I mean, the ones before those last two were really good. I mean, you know, you had Torture Garden. You've had... You had the House of Drip Blood. You... You know, just some really good ones. Asylum? I don't know. You know, how the great have fallen. I mean, they just spent too many times. And the thing was that, you know, what what really happened was that horror changed. Horror uh, started, you know, that was the slasher era. You know, the moment the 80s hit, that was the slasher era, and anthology films disappeared for a while. I still remember one anthology that came out during that time. Uh, Nightmares, you remember that one, Mr. Highland? Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the few that actually came out during that time. You know, pre... pre um, Pre creep show and that and that film did not even have a wraparound story it was just a picture of some eyes and and um lightning and stuff, but that actually had some good stories, you know. So anyways, yeah, um, if I recall, um, the, the greats of the, uh, you know, of, of the early seventies and that, uh, you know, seventies and earlier, uh, you know, I mean, John Carradine did his last horror film soon after, uh, doing the Monster Club, he did did a film called House of Long Shadows. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the last one in which you had uh, Vincent Price. 
You had John Carradine, you had uh, Peter Cushing, and you had Christopher Lee in it. And that was kind of their goodbye to horror in many ways. You know, because uh, Peter Cushing was uh, not doing too well at that time. Good film. I love. I loved uh, House of Long Shadows. I've got it in my collection, but um, such a shame. I mean, you know, it was after. It was after that. I think. Well, actually, during that time, wasn't it during that time? Uh, wasn't it during the time that he that uh, Vincent Price was doing the Monster Club that he was also uh, uh, hosting Mystery? I don't know. Because I know he was he was hosting Mystery in the eighties, and that was his that was kind of his big thing until uh, you know Tim Burton got him into um, uh, God what what was what was the film? Damn it, Edward Scissorhands, and then. Uh, Vincent died. Yeah, such a shame. How the mighty have fallen. You know, one thing I was happy was that Dick Miller, one of his uh, last films was Demon Knight. So that was all, that was a good ending for him. Um, I'm, I think he did more stuff after that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he did the uh he did the Gremlin films after Demon Knight. No. Before. Um are you sure? Because I yes. think Gremlins two was I thought Gremlins two was after Demon Knight. No. Oh, okay. Whatever. All I know is that, uh, you know, I hate it when when the uh, when these great actors fall because their last films are usually never uh, worthy of them. I mean, well, actually, with uh, with Vincent Price, I I I think. Uh, what well, what would you say? Would you say that Edward Scissorhands was uh, was a good ending for him? Not really. Eh, better than most. Okay. So anyway, so so you 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 suffered like I did, huh? When it came, what? you suffered like I did in regard to uh, Monster Club, huh? Mm, pretty much. Yeah, when I when you first brought it up, I thought I I my mind went boogery, and I thought thought you meant. Monster Squad, and I was all happy. I was like, oh no, Mon- Mon- Monster Club, oh god, no. Because I'd actually watched this film once before, I just couldn't remember it. Now I know why. <laughs> mm, god. Alrighty, so any last words on uh, a monster club there, Mr. Highland? Mm, no, other than uh, uh, you don't have to see this movie if you don't want to. Yeah, I don't think you want to. Let's put it this way. I finished watching the movie and I, I had a headache. Ouch. It's horrible. Horrible. The only, you know, 
Well, your other movie gave me a migraine. <laughs> oh, that movie? Yeah, I don't, I don't, we don't even want to talk. <laughs> oh, God. I know what movie you're uh, talking about. Yeah, I still got to get revenge on you for that one. I really do. That, that's revenge time. Oh, God, that's... Oh. oh, God, every time I think about it, it comes into my head. Uh, the imagery. Uh. Yeah, I could I could watch all of Uli Lamel's films and not have as horrid a reaction. And believe me, Uli Lamel's films would... I'd want to rip my eyes out. Watch them. Oh, well then... Uh, 120 Days of Sodom was worse. Maybe I should hire someone to read the novel to you. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, you really want me to lock you in Hull House, don't you, with the demon... <laughs> with the demon uh, devil baby. Oh, there's also a, there's also a female ghost that, that has glowing eyes, too. So you'd be chased around the house by that. So so yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't talk about uh twenty you know, hundred and twenty days of Sodom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few films you don't talk about. And I still got to get revenge on Day Green for, uh, for, uh, what, what, what is this? Slaughter, slaughter Vomit Dolls? Oh, God! <laughs> that? Oh, God, no! Not is the, that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's bad enough, you know, with that. And then, of course, the that Sasuke movie. The regurgitated sacrifice. Ugh, God damn. Ugh, God. Ugh. Anyways, alrighty. So, yeah. Last any any last words for the for the uh, fans? <laughs> yes. Thanks for listening, and uh, tune in next time where we will be discussing an interesting movie um, that I've heard is. It's called The Nest, not to be confused with The Nest. This is the 1988 Killer Mutant Cockroach film. And we're going to be having a special guest to help discuss the film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a really good guest. Yes. So tune in next time for plenty of dark, razor-sharp humor. Good deal. This is one episode I am dying to record. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So, yeah, uh... You know, also remember, people, get yourself a copy of Mr. Highland's book, The Witch Prince, and also get a copy of Symphony of Death Part 4, Shadow Man vs. the Undead. Get those on Amazon.com. Definitely check those out. You know, show us some love there, people. And as always, this is William Patterson, King of Splatterpunk, saying, keep America strong, watch horror films. Catch you later. The love that you bring, bring me along. The pain that you give. Gives me a home Do you want to stay by my side? Do you want me to turn and hide? We are disappearing inside Seeing pictures 
of our goodbye.